Time now for an in-depth look at the market news on this Monday, and for that I'm joined on the line by Dr. Yang jun Sup, Professor of Economics at the Catholic University of Korea. Professor Yang, thank you for coming on today. You're welcome. As we uh, just heard, the Chinese stock markets have been, were closed for 11 days and opening again today. Everyone knew there was going to be a reckoning to be had because of the Wuhan coronavirus situation. So what happened today? Okay, well, as mentioned in the previous story, the uh, Shanghai index fell by 8.13% at the opening. Uh, Shenzhen uh, stock index also fell by about 8.27% on opening. And after opening, it's been holding a bit steady. The markets have not closed yet, uh, but the entire day it's been uh, stable around that range. So it's not really recovering at all from the initial drop. Now, Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index, uh, they've, uh, they've opened a uh, week early because, well, uh, they operate on their own calendar, and uh, they fell 0.8% uh, on Friday, but they actually rose just a little bit today, 0.07%. Again, Hang Seng Index, they haven't closed their markets either, but uh, they seem to have gotten all their... Uh, drops out of the way last week. Now, the U.S. market and the European markets, they haven't opened yet. Uh, but if you look at Friday, it hasn't been a good day for uh, U.S. markets or the uh, European markets. The S&P fell by 1.8% on Friday, Dow by 2.1%, Nasdaq by 1.6%. And then the uh, 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 English FTSE uh, fell by 1.3%. And European stocks, 600, fell by 1%, but they also had Brexit on Friday, so that probably fed into the negative aspect as well. Uh, now, uh, you have to remember, though, that because Chinese uh, stock market did not open uh, for a couple of weeks since the uh, Lunar New Year holiday, uh, they're taking all this hit at once. Uh, so it, I think it's a bit more instructive to see uh, how it compares over the last two weeks with the uh, foreign uh, exchange, uh, foreign uh, stock markets. Uh, the U.S. markets fell by about 3%. Uh, so even compared to that standard, Chinese markets have taken a major hit. And the uh, People's Bank of China will uh, increase liquidity by 1.2 trillion yuan. Uh, that's the largest single-day increase since 2004, partially to deal uh, with the uh, contraction from the uh, virus. Well, that does help put it into perspective. Um, the Korean stocks were also uh, down sharply this morning, but recovered a little bit later in the session. What exactly was the story on the Kospi and the Kosdaq? Okay, well, Kospi, uh, it fell by 0.01% today, but Kostak rose by 0.68%. So we seem to be stabilizing somewhat. Uh, if we look at the uh, Kospi and Kostak index uh, since the uh, uh, Lunar New Year holiday, uh, or, uh, since January 23rd, uh, Kospi fell by 5.7% and Kostak fell by 5.8%. So compared with the United States, which only fell by about 3%, Korea has taken a lot of hit as well. And a lot of people are concerned not only with the stock market, but with the exchange rate, because Korea's, uh, Korea won is approaching 1,200 won per dollar. Uh, and the last time this happened was when the economy was in a really bad shape uh, last October. Uh, and then, uh, as you said, in, as you mentioned in the uh, previous stories, uh, we're trying to estimate how much it, uh, effect on uh, this uh, coronavirus will have on the Korean uh, GDP. Right now, uh, the consensus seems to be that ch Chinese GDP will fall by one, about 1%, 1 uh, and uh, Korean GDP will fall by about 0.2% because of that. But they may be uh, underestimating things a little bit, especially if the, uh, co uh, the uh, coronavirus starts spreading uh, more actively in Korea. Uh, then it won't only be the exports and imports which are get, going to get hit, 
but the Korean domestic service industries, we're already seeing cases where people are not going to theaters, not going to movies, uh, not going to restaurants or anywhere where there's a lot of people, and that's bound to have some effect on Korea's service industries. We've seen this during the uh, SARS epidemic as well as uh, during the uh, Sewero incident when everybody was too depressed to do anything, so the uh, service industry really suffered. Right. Well, to your point about what to do about all this, uh, this week the finance ministry, the trade ministry, they'll be uh, holding meetings throughout the week about the coronavirus situation. The Bank of Korea also due to release some numbers uh, on December as well. Uh, briefly, what should we be watching this week? Okay, we should see what kind of uh, policies that the uh, government will put out. Uh, obviously, the, uh, in this case, the how to deal with uh, spread of contagion uh, will be as important, uh, but still, I think there should be some kind of a uh, policy for the service industries. They've been getting a lot of hit over the last three years, uh, first with uh, the uh, fad retaliation, uh, which cut into Korea's tourism, and then the uh, minimum wage as well as the 52-hour work week, uh, which raised the labor costs for these service industries and now the uh, coronavirus. So they're really getting hit a lot in the last uh, three years. And we really can't do much to actually uh, get more customers to these industries unless the uh, virus uh, stop spreading. So I think some kind of a temporary aid is much more appropriate. Uh, and then uh, some other interesting statistics or uh, information that's coming up. The uh, Bank of Korea will have the uh, Monetary P uh, Policy Committee meeting minutes uh, revealed uh, this week, as well as the uh, December's, uh, as well as the Consumer Price Index. And then in the United States, they have some uh, statistics on how the uh, manufacturing will do. Uh, uh, United States has been doing very well, but the manufacturing industry has been in trouble. So we'll try to see whether the uh, manufacturing industry is getting worse or better. And then the U.S. employment rate will also be uh, revealed this week. All right, Professor Young, we'll be watching all those stories closely. Thanks so much for sharing your insights today. Appreciate it. Thank you.